Um, well, welcome everyone to this press conference, which has taken on a slightly more serious tone than we thought it would have when it was first called. But at least it's warm and dry in, in, this, in this room. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't normally make notes, but uh, I've made a few notes just to make sure that I don't forget some very key messages that I wish to leave with you this morning. Make no mistake that this general election is an incredibly important one for the United Kingdom. The country is in dire straits. Biggest debt level since World War II, highest taxation since World War II, GDP flatlining, GDP per capita reducing. I think we've had the longest recession GDP per capita um, in all of recorded history, immigration through the roof. More people have come to this country in the last 25 years than in all of history before that. An inability to enforce our borders, and I could go on and on and on. And some people have speculated as to why it was that Rishi accelerated the decision to call an election. It was a very sensible move from his perspective. He had a glimmer of mediocre economic news and he thought he'd just run for it because inflation came down. But inflation only came down because of the, cap, the reduction in the cap on gas and fuel prices. And he knows inflation in all probability is going to go on up. He also knows that there's no fiscal room for a tax cut before the general election. So he would have had to wait months with nothing good to show for it, and by the way, no flights going to Rwanda, and I can completely endorse anyone who's sensible enough to see that the Rwandan scheme is fundamentally flawed. No flights will go to Rwanda. We'll continue to have open borders. And the other thing, of course, that will get stronger and stronger and more difficult for Rishi as we, headed, as we would have headed towards November is our strength, Reform UK strength. If you look at where we were in the polls in October 2023, polling 5%, Richard likes to cite the 1% that he uh, inherited in early 2020. But let's, more recently, we were polling 5% in October 2023, 13% in Wellingborough, 17% in Blackpool South. And our, the, uh, the political wind is in our sails. So every day that went by, every month that went by, Rishi was getting weaker and we were getting stronger. It was a sensible move by Rishi Sunak to call this election from his perspective. It also signals how scared and how failed he has been. Um, the other thing I want to mention, which is critical, is that this administration that has so failed was always going to fail. And the reason it was always going to fail is because it broke the central promise it made to the British people in 2019 which was to get Brexit done. We have not got Brexit. When we voted for Brexit, we voted for the United Kingdom to leave the European Union. We didn't vote to leave Northern Ireland behind. I know there are some people who said Northern Ireland was a price worth paying for Brexit. Let me tell you folks, if you're prepared as a government to turn your back on over one million British citizens without putting up even the slightest of defence, you're an absolutely hopeless lot who will see the end of the United Kingdom. Brexit was not done. Northern Ireland's been left behind. We're hitched at the hip from a regulatory and legal perspective to the European Union. We would not be in the economic predicament we're in 
if Brexit had been done, we would have deregulated we would have cut taxes, we would have promoted the working and middle classes, we would have promoted uh, pri the private, enter uh, private enterprise in this country, we would have replaced the dependency culture that 25 years of Labour and Tory government has produced with an aspirational culture. We would have replaced wealth redistribution with wealth creation. That's what Brexit was all about. So we haven't got it. And and so the administration was always going to fail. And of course, as bad as Boris Johnson was in getting Brexit done, Rishi Sunak is a one-nation, non-Brexiteer Tory. Um, he has to go, and he will go. Um, before I finish, I just want to touch a bit on Northern Ireland. As some of you will know, it, it's been, a bit, of my, it's been a, a, a bit of a bugbear of mine, and I think a critical bugbear for the reasons I've explained. Richard and I went over to Northern Ireland earlier this year and we established an alliance with a party called the Traditional Unionist Voice. And it's run by a chap called Jim Allister, who's the antithesis of Rishi Sunak, the antithesis of Richard Tice. He's a man, uh, the, the antithesis of Rishi Sunak, absolutely the same as Richard Tice. Strike all of that, folks. Um, um, the antithesis of Rishi Sunak. Uh, he is a man of great principle like Richard Tice. He is a man who stood by his principles, has made great personal sacrifices for the fight for Northern Ireland. And we were in the process of registering a political party in Northern Ireland, which is what you have to do to stand in Northern Ireland. But I'm afraid that this election has come on us faster uh, than we had anticipated. And so we haven't been able to register Reform UK in Northern Ireland. It might be that we will be able to uh, by the 7th of June, which is when I think nominations need to be in. But I spoke to Jim Allister this morning, and I want to make it clear to the DUP, who have become the new Tories of Northern Ireland, uh, that I, I spoke to Jim Allister, and I said that I would personally ensure that it had all the funds it needed to stand in as many seats in Northern Ireland as it determined was required in order to give the DUP the same bloody nose that the Tories are going to get in the United Kingdom. Uh, I'm going to stand in Wellingborough again, um, and I'm very much looking forward to reconnecting with the people of Wellingborough. I'm going to be taking a flat in Wellingborough, and I'm going to be spending a lot of time there over the next few days, uh, next few weeks. And um, that's one, that's just a matter of fact. Um, and without any further ado, I would now like to introduce someone who joined Reform UK at the same time as I did, and really for the same purpose, which is to save the union of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Anne Whittacombe. Thank you very much, Ben. Now, the crucial issue in this forthcoming general election is going to be immigration and the impact that it is having. The published figures have now come out for the year ending in December 2023, and they are a migration, and this is legal migration, strictly legal migration, 685,000. Nowhere near the 200,000 that we had been previously promised. 685,000. Now, at first glance, because the 2022 figures were 764,000, it might look as if there has been at least a slight decrease. But what we have to remember is that the 2022 figures were revised not once, but twice upwards. We began by being told, just as we are being told the figures now for 23, we began by being told that the figures for 2022 were 606,000. And after two revisions, they ended up at 764,000. So it's therefore reasonable to <coughs> conclude that the 685,000, which has been published today, will be revised and is likely to end up as substantially more. Now, having been 
in government and having been in the Home Office and having been, admittedly a long time ago, Immigration Officer uh, or Immigration Minister, uh, I know very well that immigration has a tremendous impact on the country. There is no such thing as an economic movement which doesn't impact right across uh, the, uh, the scale. Uh, and immigration has a big impact on our health services. Immigration has an impact on housing and it has an impact on the general infrastructure. And we at 685,000 net, net, are actually looking at the population of Manchester. So the population of Manchester come in to this country in a single year. If we look at gross migration at 1.2 million, it is is going to require a huge amount of housing. I think Richard will be telling you that it will be something like a new house every two minutes, which we certainly aren't doing. Uh, and a huge impact on health services, uh, both local uh, and regional. And that is what we are now facing. And that is why immigration is at the root of, or rather uncontrolled immigration is at the root uh, of so much that is going wrong. Now, I'd just like you to look at this video. Who voted for mass immigration? See, those figures have just come in. They've literally just dropped. The size of a small city. Who voted for hundreds of thousands more? All the way back to the Victorian period here, and where well, you can see the story. Who promised to bring the numbers down? to tens of thousands. Net migration to this country will be in the order of tens of thousands each year. But lied. This is a promise we made to the British people and it is a promise we are keeping. Again. Britain does not need net migration. And again. No ifs, no buts. And again. We are driving down immigration. And again. And the numbers are already slowing. The Tories have broken Britain and Labour will give us even more mass immigration. So we have to make the case for the benefits of migration, the benefits of free movement. But there is an alternative. Only Reform UK will freeze immigration. Britain needs reform. Thank you very much, Anne. Um, now, for any political movement to succeed, it needs, two th it needs a number of things. It needs at least two uh, things immediately. The first is a leader who is prepared to absolutely stay the distance and make the fight. And it needs that leader not to become the only figure that mounts the battle but someone who brings with him a broad and deep set of people. And Richard, if I may say so, Richard Tice, if I may say so, has gone from strength to strength as an individual, as a leader, over the last three to four years. He had the foresight to recognise that the Brexit Party's job was not fully done, that he had to rebrand it as Reform UK, and as I mentioned, he took it over when it was polling 1% and the Tories were on 36%. He's put up with personal opprobrium. He's put in huge amounts of personal investment, both in terms of time and money, to keep the Reform UK party going. He recruited Anne and me and former MEPs, and I can tell you it was not an easy job. And he also managed to recruit 
all of you people who are in this room and thousands and thousands of others across the country. Richard Tice is the leader this country needs. Someone who has the moral courage not to vacate either when the going gets tough or when it might suit him. And so it gives me great pleasure, Richard, to introduce to you, to introduce to all of you, Richard Tice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this, the launch of the general election campaign. July the 4th is the date to look forward to. But goodness me, yesterday, I mean, seriously, we had the Prime Minister drenched in rain, his voice drowned out by the boogie blaster of the Ramona in chief, no less. You couldn't make it up, but it typifies the utter incompetence and uselessness of this Conservative government. Now, everyone thought it was going to go for October, November. I've won a few bets, by the way. The truth is that he's bottled it. He's cut and run. Why? Because he was absolutely terrified, as Ben quite rightly alluded to, to the fact that Reform UK is going up and up in the polls with our common sense policies to save Britain, whilst the Tories have been sinking in the polls. And he was terrified as to where this may end up. And I'm absolutely delighted during this election campaign that my good friend Nigel Farage will be helping out significantly in campaigning to drive home the message <coughs> of Reform UK and how we can save Britain. And I can also confirm with great excitement that we will be standing in 630 seats across the whole of England, Scotland and Wales. No ifs, no buts. And personally, <laughs> and personally, I will be standing in the constituency of Boston and Skegness. And contrary to all the MP what all the commentators say, likes of my good friend Lee Anderson, myself, we are going to win seats. We are going to win seats. So what's our message? Well, this great country of ours, this incredible United Kingdom of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. So much potential, so much opportunity and yet, sadly, so badly run, so badly led, so badly governed. Apparently we've got all the experts in the Treasury, in the OBR, in the Bank of England, all these experts. Well, if they're so expert, and I just want you to think about the number 70. If they were so expert, how come we've ended up with the highest taxes for 70 years? The highest government spending, much of it wasted, with the worst public sector outcomes for 70 years. The highest waiting lists since records began some 70 years ago. The highest national debt for some 70 years the lowest growth decade for 70 years. You're getting the picture. And the longest recession per person for 70 years. Yes, per person is what matters. Do people feel better or worse off? And everybody feels worse off after 14 years of Tory failure. That's the result of incompetence and these experts along with weak, feeble politicians who have broken Britain. And sadly, that failure of the establishment and the experts manifests itself in the great scandals that we hear about with depressing regularity. The maternity scandals, the post office scandal, and this week, the infected blood scandal. The establishment, civil servants, Politicians covering things up, lying, deceiving, misleading. It's an absolute outrage. And Prime Minister and Keir Starmer, it's not good enough just to apologise. Ordinary people are furious about what's happened. Talking of anger, 
I mean, we were promised, as the video and Anne talked about, that immigration numbers would come down. Now, let's be clear. Smart immigration is a fantastic thing. But you've got to be smart about it. No one voted for mass immigration. But the figures just released two hours ago confirm that for the second year running, we've now got mass immigration in the United Kingdom. A city the size of Birmingham arrived. Net, a city well bigger than the size of Manchester. Is this fair? Is it a coincidence that housing rents have risen by over 20% in just the last two years? House prices completely unaffordable, in particular for young people. Where's the fairness in that? We haven't built 300,000 homes in a single year for 60 years. And yet, just to accommodate the net migration in 2023, we need to be building more than one home every two minutes. Over 300,000 homes. That's not including looking after our own British citizens, in particular young people, desperately trying to save to get on the housing ladder. Where is the fairness in that? The pressure on our healthcare system, ambulance delays, A&E delays, waiting lists at record levels. The pressure on the healthcare system is completely unsustainable and not helped by a huge increase in the population. I repeat, smart immigration is a great thing, but it is simply unfair for British people to essentially expect slower, worse outcomes on healthcare. It is simply unfair. It's also unfair, in particular again, for young people, that their wages should be depressed and undercut because of a huge increase in the supply of labour. It's simply not fair. Now, the choice at this election for the British people is do you want more of the same from the main two parties or do you want change? Do you agree with me and us that actually this great nation of ours, we can do so much better, but to do so, we have to change course. We have to reform so many things. We have to reform our economy to make work pay in particular, again, for young people. If you lift the tax threshold starting point to £20,000, young people benefit the most. We have to reform our healthcare system to get to zero waiting lists in two years. We're the only party with a clear, bold plan for healthcare reform. That's an ambition. Some might say it's unachievable. I disagree. It's doable. Zero waiting lists in two years. Most other Western nations don't have waiting waiting lists. With mass immigration, we're adding unfair pressure onto our healthcare system. These are the changes and many, many more that I'll be talking about and will be talking about on the campaign trail. But the choice for everybody is, whether you vote Tory or whether you vote Labour, you will get the same form of socialism. You will get higher taxes, lower wages, a mass immigration that will make us all worse off and our quality of life will diminish. If you want change, if you want lower taxes, if you want higher wages, then if you want faster health care, and if you want smart immigration, then the answer actually is to freeze immigration. And the only way you will do that, the only way you will do that, forget all the spin and the nonsense from the main two parties, we've heard it all before. Oh, I nearly forgot. The Prime Minister a few weeks ago promised to reduce immigration until he got a tap on the shoulder this week by the big man, yeah, big Lord Dave. He said, no, 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 we Rishi. You can't reduce the number of international visas. So you can't trust the Tories. And as we know, Labour wants more mass immigration. If you want change, folks, you've got to vote for it. On July the 4th, vote for change, vote for Reform UK. Thank you very much.